All right, let's get right into it. We've all heard the big promise of retrieval augmented generation, right? RAG for short. It was supposed to be the thing that made AI factual, you know, grounded in real data, so it would finally stop making stuff up. But that first version, it had a critical, and honestly, a pretty catastrophic flaw. Today, we're going to track the evolution of RAG from those really brittle, simple pipelines to the truly autonomous AI systems that are being built as we speak. So picture this. You spent weeks, maybe months, building an AI demo. It works perfectly. Every question you ask, it nails. You show it to your team, to your boss. Everyone's blown away. Then you push it into the real world, and it just falls apart. It fails, and it fails badly. So what gives? Why does this happen over and over again? Well, that's the big question we're answering today, and the story starts with something called naive rag. Okay, so let's start at square one with what the field now calls the naive RAG problem. Now, naive rag was basically the hello world of enterprise AI. It's a really simple, super straightforward way to connect a large language model to your own data, your own documents. And the goal was brilliant, right? Stop the hallucinations, give the AI current factual information to work with. And on the surface, I mean, it looked like it worked perfectly. And the process itself was just beautifully simple. A clean three-step pipeline. First up, indexing. You basically chop up all your documents into smaller pieces or chunks and turn them into numbers the machine can understand. Step two, retrieval. A user asks a question and the system zips through those chunks to find the most relevant ones. And finally, step three, generation. You take those chunks, bundle them up with the original question, and just hand the whole package over to an LLM to write the final answer. Simple, linear, logical. What could possibly go wrong? Well, that very simplicity created a really dangerous trap, something we now call the rag fallacy. And this is the core of the problem. It's that dangerous assumption that just because your demo worked on a few clean, perfect examples, it's somehow ready for the absolute chaos of a production environment. And this fallacy is precisely why so many of those exciting early AI systems just crashed and burned. So what happens when this simple, neat little pipeline smacks into the messy real world? Yeah, it breaks. Let's look at exactly how and where it shatters under pressure. And what's so wild is that it's not just one single point of failure. It's a minefield. You've got the content void. The answer just straight up isn't in your documents to begin with. Then there's the ranking mirage, where the correct info actually is there, but your search just misses it. The context cliff is a real killer. The answer is split right across two different chunks, so the AI only ever sees half the picture. And hey, even if you do everything right up to that point, you can still get hit by the extraction enigma, where the LLM has the right text but just can't find the answer within it. Every single step is a potential disaster. And here's the crucial takeaway. The system's own design is its fatal flaw. It's a rigid, one-way street. Any error at any stage, a bad search, a poorly cut chunk, it just cascades down the line, and it's irreversible. There's no feedback loop. There are no second chances. There's no way for the system to pause and say, hang on, this doesn't seem right. Let me try that again. That first mistake poisons the entire process every single time. And this leads to the most terrifying failure mode of all, which is, and I'm quoting here, the failure mode where a system produces an answer that is factually wrong, yet appears highly credible because it can cite a source. Just think about that for a second. It's not just making something up out of thin air. It's a hallucination with a fake alibi. This grounded but incorrect paradox is so dangerous because it creates this illusion of credibility that can totally mislead people. Okay, so the widespread failure of Naive Rag, it forced a massive rethink across the entire industry. It wasn't about throwing the whole idea out, but about making it smarter, more resilient. And this led everyone down two new, very distinct paths to building more robust AI. What we saw was a real philosophical shift. We moved from this simple linear handoff you know, just blindly tossing documents at the LLM, to a much more intelligent, multi-stage process. The new goal wasn't just to find some context. It was to maximize the signal-to-noise ratio. It became about carefully curating the absolute best, most precise information for the LLM before it even thinks about writing an answer. The first of these new paths is corrective RAG, or CRAG. And the perfect analogy for this is your car's GPS. A simple map just shows you one route, but a GPS, it's constantly checking your position. If you take a wrong turn, it doesn't just let you drive into a lake, it immediately recalculates and gets you back on track. CRAG does that exact same thing, but for finding information. 
So here's how it works. After it retrieves some documents, CRAG adds this brand new, absolutely critical step, evaluate relevance. Think of it like a quality checkpoint. A small, fast model looks at the documents and basically gives them a thumbs up or thumbs down. If they're good, great, we move on. But if they're garbage, it triggers a corrective action. It might try searching the web or requiring the database. This one step transforms RAG from a blind, open-loop system into a smart, self-correcting, closed-loop one. It's a game-changer. Now, the second path is even more radical. This is a Gentic REG. And if CREG is like an upgraded GPS, a Gentic REG is like hiring a brilliant personal research assistant. You don't just ask it a simple question anymore. You give it a complex goal. And the agent then plans out the task, executes a whole series of steps, and uses a whole toolkit of different resources to get you the best possible answer. And that's the key, this toolkit. The agent has memory, so it can remember what you've talked about before. It has planning abilities, often using frameworks like React to reason and strategize. And maybe most importantly, it has tool use. This is a fundamental shift. The LLM is now in the driver's seat. It's not just the final writer anymore. It's the orchestrator. It's the project manager deciding, okay, for this part of the problem, I need a vector search. For this other part, I need to search the web. And for this last piece, I need to query a database. So when you zoom out, what does all this really mean? This whole journey from that brittle, naive RAG all the way to these advanced agent systems. It tells us something really profound about where AI engineering is heading. When you lay it all out like this, the progression is crystal clear. You start with naive rag, a simple but brittle pipeline. Then you get corrective rag, which adds branching and self-correction to become robust and reliable. And finally, you have agentic rag, this dynamic, non-linear system that's all about flexibility and raw power. It's like we went from a librarian who just points you to a random shelf, to a librarian who fact checks your sources, to a full-blown research team managed by an AI project lead. And ultimately, this evolution isn't just about better chatbots. It is a clear sign of the entire field of AI engineering finally growing up. We're moving away from just hacking together cool demos, and we're starting to build principled, professional, reliable systems. And these advanced RAG systems, they really embody the core principles of this new discipline. It's about being data-centric, obsessing over the quality of your information, not just your code. It's about constant iteration and experimentation, it's about learning to manage systems that are probabilistic by nature, building in those safeguards. And of course, it's about ethical and responsible design so we can actually trust what these things are telling us. Which leaves us with one final pretty mind-bending question. As these systems get more and more autonomous, more capable, are we just building better versions of Siri and Alexa? Or are we actually building the very first generation of an autonomous digital workforce? The answer to that question is probably going to define the next decade of technology.